Wow, there's the glass fibers. That's cool. Damn. Ah, that's how you know it's solid right there. Today, we're diving into one of the toughest and most dimensionally stable materials in 3D printing, glass-filled polyether ether ketone, or GFP. If you're working in aerospace, automotive, energy, or electronics, and need something that can hold tight tolerances, resist heat, and still insulate electrically, GF Peak is a serious contender. GF Peak is a composite material made of polyether ether ketone reinforced with glass fibers, typically around 20 to 30% by weight. Peak on its own is a high performance thermoplastic, as you all know. Adding glass fibers gives it a huge boost in stiffness, dimensional stability, and heat resistance. Unlike CF Peak, GF Peak stays electrically insulating. So if you need performance without conductivity, this is your material. Here's what GF Peak brings to the table. Tensile strength, 105 megapascals. This is a measure of how much pulling force the material can take before it breaks. In GF Peak, this means it's strong enough to handle structural loads without failing. Tensile modulus, 7,250 megapascals. This is a measure of stiffness. GF Peak holds its shape under load better than unfilled peak, which makes it great for parts that can't afford to flex. Flexural strength, 130 megapascals. This tells you how much stress it can handle before breaking while being bent. Useful for brackets, housings, or any structural component. Flexural modulus, 7,625 megapascals. This reflects how rigid the part is when bent. The higher the number, the less likely the part is to warp or bend during use. Elongation at break, around 2.5%. GF Peak is stiff, but that also means it's less ductile. It won't stretch much before it snaps, so design accordingly. Heat deflection temperature, 300 degrees Celsius. This is the temperature at which the material starts to deform under load. GF Peak can handle heat better than most high performance thermoplastics. If you remember from the previous video, CF Peak can only handle about 265 degrees Celsius before bending, and regular Peak is not even close. Glass transition temperature, 140 degrees Celsius. This is the point where the amorphous regions of the polymer soften. Below this temperature, the material stays rigid. Surface resistance, over 10 to the power of 13 ohms. This means it's electrically insulating. Perfect for parts that can't conduct electricity like sensors or insulators. More about that in a second. Density, 1.44 grams per cubic centimeter. Slightly heavier than unfilled peak due to the glass fibers, but still much lighter than metals. So let's compare them in real world use. Use GF Peak when you need electrical insulating, high heat resistance, and dimensional accuracy. It's better than CF Peak when conductivity is a concern, like in electrical enclosures or sensor housings, and it's stiffer than regular Peak without the cost of CF Peak. Use CF Peak when your part needs to be as light and stiff as possible. Use regular Peak when you need impact resistance or more ductility, like for implants or dynamic components under load that need a little bit of give. In short, GF Peak is the middle ground, more rigid and heat resistant than regular Peak, better suited for insulating applications than CF Peak. GF Peak is being used in some seriously demanding fields, and here's where it shines. Aerospace, structural brackets, electrical insulators inside aircraft or satellites. GF Peak keeps its shape in temperature cycles and doesn't conduct electricity, making it ideal for separating electrical pathways near hot zones. Automotive. Printed GF Peak can be found in the transmission guides, under the hood sensor housings, and heat shields. One real world use case, a 3D printed throttle body insulator that doesn't warp or transfer heat into the intake. Oil and gas. This stuff is being used for sensor housings and seal components in drilling equipment where temperatures and pressures are extreme. GF Peak resists chemical exposure and holds its form. Essential for reliability. Medical. GF Peak is great for reusable surgical tools like retractor handles, bone drill guides, and sterilizable device components. You can get high stiffness and no conductivity. Perfect for clean room environment. In wafer processing, GF Peak is used for test sockets, guides, and grippers that need to resist chemical etching fluids while maintaining tight tolerances and full insulation. A few years ago, we printed a custom electrical connector in GF Peak on the Vision Miner 22 IDEX. This part was made for a customer who needed the high strength chemical resistance and heat tolerance of Peak, but also required exceptional dimensional accuracy. Regular Peak did not have the stiffness, CF Peak was too conductive, and GF Peak was the perfect fit. The final part held tight tolerances and delivered exactly what the customer needed. And while we can't share all the details, we believe this part was used in an aerospace application, likely why they couldn't settle for just any off-the-shelf connector. When failure isn't an option and specs are tight, GF Peak delivers. We're actually using GF Peak on our own 22 IDEX for a couple of internal parts like the Z clicker, the hot end interface, and the Z probe holder. These parts are all super close to the nozzle, so they're sitting in a high temp environment, and regular plastics just wouldn't cut it. The hot end interface especially is right up against the heat block. Plus, since GF Peak isn't conductive, it's great for things like this Z clicker where we're isolating magnets. We don't want anything shorting out. 
It gives us the heat resistance of peak, but with better dimensional stability and printability, which is key for our production line, thanks to the glass fiber. Now, printing G of peak takes some serious prep, but here's how to get it dialed in. Nozzle temp, 450 degrees Celsius. You need this much heat to fully melt the polymer and ensure good flow. A hardened steel nozzle is a must due to the abrasive glass fibers. Bed temp, 160 degrees Celsius. Keeps the base layer hot enough to bond well and avoid warping. This is especially important with large parts. Chamber temperature, 90 degrees C or higher. It keeps the entire part from cooling unevenly, reducing internal stresses that can cause delamination or cracking. Filament drying. G of peak absorbs moisture, which can lead to bubbles, poor layer adhesion, and surface defects. Dry it well before and during printing. Glass fibers are extremely abrasive. While not conductive like carbon, they're just as rough on your hardware. Standard brass nozzles will wear down quickly, so we recommend hardened steel. Even then, check for wear regularly. If your print starts to look inconsistent or you're getting strange extrusion behavior, your nozzle could be shot. Use a carbon fiber build plate and Vision Miner nanopolymer adhesive for the best adhesion and release. It also helps minimize thermal expansion mismatch during cooling. So this GF Peak gear that we've printed as an example, if you look at the surface finish of this part, it's, it's incredible. And the glass fibers pretty much are what's helping get this part to be super dimensionally accurate. Also in front of me are some components that we 3D printed for a customer, can't say who, but these parts, as you can see, they're brackets and a lot of sharp lines, a lot of details. And again, GF Peak is kind of the way to go for this. These parts also had to be in a high temp environment, so that's why they're GF Peak. It's incredible to see the amount of detail that you can get in these very tiny intricate parts with GF Peak. It's simply, not impossible, but it's quite the challenge to get the same thing in just standard peak. And again, for a high temp environment like this, the extra added heat deflection ability of GF peak compared to CF peak and regular peak is insane. If I recall, it's about 100 degrees Celsius more than just regular peak. So if you really need stiffness and strength in very high temperature environments, it's kind of the way to go. Also, just prints better. Just you should use it. So now that you know what GF Peak is and how it prints, it's time to see what this material is really made out of. We're handing it over to Cole to put this stuff through the ringer. Bend, burn, break, and test its real world durability. Let's get into it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that time has come again, and that time is to test out Peak, GF Peak, the best Peak. Look, Peak, these are strong. This is not Peak, and so Peak obviously wins. And uh, thank you for watching. Just kidding, we're gonna go through the paces. Let's go. Let's see what happens when we light it on fire. You know the drill one inch away for five seconds, we see the aftermath, and then we do it again one inch away for five seconds to see how long it smokes because it needs to stealth extinguish. One inch away, full power, five seconds. Didn't do anything. It did, but let's see. This is CF10. So this is carbon fiber peak, 10%. Matt, you can remind me, because I don't know all these off the top of my head, considerably higher temperature resistance with the GF, right? It's a 35 degrees Celsius difference. 35 Celsius. These aren't actually melting. If these were melting, you would be seeing dripping and so on and so forth. And I'm sure if we kept going eventually, yes, they would melt. But what you're seeing is actually the degradation of the, the material itself. I wanna know. Let's do it until we see it drip, if it does. I get why this stuff's like a magic material. That's crazy. And just for fun. No, it's still molten at the core. Once we break away all this charring, that's wild. For how long I held that butane, it's 3,600 degrees. Let's keep going. That's what this is about, I guess, isn't it?
All right, we get it. That's unreal. Hang on, give me a second, guys. Impressive, yeah, it broke apart and it broke down, but the amount of time that that torch was on that was unbelievable. And, and no drips, no melting. I do wanna get times on that, so let me do the five second one again and we'll see how long it actually takes to stop smoking. I'll start from the other end. And... Done. This stuff's wild. Overall, this stuff just takes heat. Like, it, it just doesn't care. It's unbelievable, actually. I was not expecting that kind of performance. And I've worked with this stuff for a long time. I suppose now the time has come for, can we get a cool graphic and maybe a jingle? Torsion time! We're gonna see what it can do torsionally. All right, a bit slower this time. 12.4. Interesting. Well, let's get to the actual science. And the actual science is going to be using this fancy testing machine, the UTM. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Will GF Peak be the new king of materials? Will GF Peak reach the top of the charts? GF Peak, I have high hopes. Let's see how high are X, X, Y. These. So. Here's the X, Y. Usually these perform very well. That's a very linear graph. And we reached 3,221. Amazing. So let's see what kind of numbers we're going to get with Z. Not usually as exciting as X, Y, but very valuable information to know. Yep, we're around 1116. Not too bad. Let's see if that is a consistent number with the second test. 1194, okay. Not bad numbers at all. Very interesting results. It's time for the microscope portion. So what we're gonna do is look at how these broke and see what we can find out. And it's clear that we did not have very good Z strength whatsoever. You don't wanna see them break this way. You want to see them break like this. This is the carbon fiber peak. Very clear failure point on the Z. It broke vertically. So the interlayer adhesion was so good that it, it took all these layers with it. And inside it just looks solid. It, it, yeah. It's hard to tell it's an FDM piece from the inside. I'm not sure exactly sure what happened there. Tuning is very difficult. Peak is always difficult to tune. You Sometimes you start seeing re results like that and, and you didn't change any settings because maybe it's got glass fiber in it as opposed to carbon fiber or it's not as dry or maybe it's older. But what we did see good results in were the XY, extremely good results. That is what you want to see in very strong, very good results. Um, and we actually did one in a different orientation, which you'll be able to see. Not orientation, but the actual infill. Infill and top and bottom layers are in a different pattern spacing. And it was actually, this was actually a bit weaker. When you could probably tell why. Look at those gaps there that you don't have with the other infill. But thus far, this is our strongest material by far. The Z-axis was a little weak. That's what makes me think that there's something going on with this specific material. It's hard to say because the XY was so good. So that wasn't a lot, that, that was pretty good too, but not excellent. I think the carbon fiber was actually stronger in that, in, in, in the XY. So this is the part that I hit with the blowtorch for so long. Plenty of actual peaks still there in the center, proving that it doesn't necessarily melt. Let's see if I can break this. Wow, there's the glass fibers, that's cool. So what can you tell me about printing with GF Peak since you have quite a few years of experience with this? You're saying I'm old? Mm -hmm. It's true. It turns Peak from a nightmare into something usable and everything is better. The temperatures, you mentioned them earlier, all, all of the benefits, but finish quality, rigidity, and every way it improves Peak, both in its statistics, the numbers, but also in the way it prints and the way it behaves while printing. If ever given the choice between, only use natural, what would the term be? Natural peak. Unfilled peak if, if it's an absolute requirement um, because this makes your life, CF and GF, make your life better 
and easier in every single way. I'm shocked at how much performance the glass fiber add to the numbers of this of this stuff. I'm actually more surprised with how much better it is with heat deflection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's insane. And overall finish quality. It's, yeah. it's beautiful. This was a lifesaver for Peak because it genuinely was a headache and a nightmare and it never looked great. It could, but it took a lot of tuning. And this stuff just kind of works. G give me a, let's come up with some reasons why you wouldn't use it. Oh, well the only Inter reason- Interfacing gears. Yeah, any, anything where like abrasion and contact is a concern. Non-implantable. So if it needs to go on the body, which yeah, sounds ridiculous, yeah. but Peak is implantable. Peak, I believe is somewhat self-lubricating, but when you add- yeah something that carbon fiber is really bad and so is glass fiber because they're just going to wear each other down every single other thing besides that those two mm -hmm. used carbon fiber or glass filled 3dx tech great stuff great mm -hmm. people consistently excellent materials get them at visionminer.com i try to give you the most unbiased fair opinion of this stuff as i can by testing it and sharing my experience using it i'm cole with vision miner stick around for the next one Thank you.